Hello friends, welcome again to another session on quadrilateral and uh, today uh, in this session my objective is to discuss all the different types of quadrilaterals you are going to encounter uh, in the coming two years. Now what I have done is I have just uh, uh, made a table for your convenience so that the entire information regarding the uh, special type of quadrilaterals are with you at the same place in the same planes right so uh, basically how to go about it so you have uh, the first column where different types of quadrilaterals have been mentioned then we have uh, put the information around sides angles diagonals the area of the tri uh, quadrilateral and a particular diagram of that quadrilateral right so my recommendation would be whenever you are solving problems keep this uh, slide in front of you so that uh, you know uh, whenever you require any particular information around any particular type of quadrilateral you should be able to fetch it easily while you solve problems after uh, let's say 10 odd problems you have done on one particular type of quadrilateral all the properties would be by hearted by you automatically so you don't need to deliberately by heart it uh, the best way is to solve as many problems as possible and automatically all the information related to any particular quadrilateral will be by hearted by you so let's discuss all of these one by one and then in the subsequent sessions we'll be taking up problems on the same so the first type of quadrilateral we, we are discussing is trapezium so what is a trapezium so i will draw the diagram of a trapezium so this is a typical trapezium let me redraw it properly okay so yeah so this is a trapezium now in this case it looks like uh, first let me just tell you about the properties of this trapezium right so let's say a b c and d in the case of trapezium if you see only one pair of opposite sides are parallel about the side so these two sides are parallel and these two sides ad and bc ad and bc are not parallel so they are called non parallel sides okay so this is a trapezium now two pairs of adjacent angles are supplementary so if you see angle d plus angle a is 180 similarly angle b plus angle c is 180 so angle a plus angle d is 180 degrees angle b plus angle c is 180 degrees so they are supplementary okay and how to find out the area so let's say uh, the area will be um, denoting it by the symbol delta is equal to half into parallel sides sum so a b plus c d into the height or distance between the two sides so height in this case is this height distance between the two parallel sides okay so this is the area okay so this is typical trapezium now let's say what is isosceles tra trapezium so now in this the same diagram if 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 ad is equal to bc so if a trapezium is having non parallel sides as equal so ad is equal to bc then then abcd becomes abcd is a or is an isosceles isosceles trapezium so this is about the trapezium next let's move on to parallelogram okay now what's a parallelogram so if you see parallelogram as is mentioned first of all it's a trapez uh, it's a quadrilateral let me name this as a b c d a b c d are the sides opposite sides are equal and parallel so a b and c d are parallel first of all and they are equal as well so a b is equal to c d okay now similarly ad and bc are parallel so two arrows so arrows similar type of arrows depict that they are parallel lines and we say ad is equal to bc right ad this is ad is equal to bc and what all ab is parallel to cd as well so ad is parallel to bc now if you see only one criteria is good enough so ab is equal to cd and ab is parallel to cd if these two are fulfilled you can say the quadrilateral is a parallelogram similarly if ad is equal to bc and ad is parallel to bc then also 
it's a parallelogram we'll see the proofs in the subsequent sessions okay so this is a parallelogram please remember now uh, parallelograms have equal diagonals so uh, sorry uh, parallelograms are, parallelograms uh, by, uh, diagonals bisect each other they are not equal but they bisect each other so that means if it is o so do is equal to ob and ao is equal to oc okay so if you see here they have diagonals bisect each other okay and uh, what is the area area is the base let's say dc is the base so area would be area is dc so i am representing it by delta area is dc into the height between or the distance between the other two parallel sides so dc so hence parallels if you see you have to drop a perpendicular from b on to dc so let's say this height is h so dc into h okay similarly if you see since dc is equal to ab so it can be written as ab into h and now let's say if you drop a perpendicular from b on to ad so this is ad drop a perpendicular like that okay let's say this perpendicular is h1 okay so hence area is also equal to ad into h1 so ad is the base h1 is the perpendicular and or bc into h1 because ad is equal to bc so this is how you can find out the area of the parallelogram it's mentioned here right now let's see rhombus so what is a rhombus if you can see rhombus is parallelogram with equal size it's mentioned so all the sides are equal and obviously the it is a parallelogram so opposite sides are parallel right so opposite angles are equal as well so for example this angle is equal to this angle so let me name it a b c d first criteria is a b c d is a parallelogram then a b is equal to b c is equal to c d is equal to d a and angle a is equal to angle c and angle d is equal to angle b and what about diagonals diagonals bisect each other at right angle right mind you they are not equal so diagonals are not equal let's say this is o so this will be 90 degree okay and ao is equal to oc and od is equal to ob okay so this is what is about rhombus what about rectangle so rectangle is again uh, if you see rectangle is acha before that what is the uh, area of a rhombus since rhombus is also a parallelogram so you can apply base into height there as well base into height and another way of finding area is half into d1 into d2 where d1 is equal to one diagonal so let's say d1 is equal to ac and d2 is the other diagonal bd is it fine so this is how you find out area of the rhombus we are not going into the proofs in this session we will take up proofs one by one later okay now uh, rectangle so what is rectangle so if you see a rectangle is let me draw the rectangle so this is a rectangle rectangle okay a b c d is a rectangle you are already familiar with such geometric figures so what is it opposite sides are equal and parallel so ab is parallel so it's a parallelogram in the first place and then thus there are some special characteristics and that is each of the interior angle is 90 degree a parallelogram even one angle is 90 degree all other angles will have to be 90 degrees we'll see how so all angles are 90 degree and diagonals are equal diagonals diagonals are equal okay so if you see ac is equal to bd diagonals are equal okay and uh, they do not bisect at right angles they bisect each other but they do not bisect at right angles so that means this is o so if you see again od is equal to ob and ao is equal to oc okay but they do not bisect at right angles so please be very very careful now you have already known so let's say this is b and this is l then area 
which is denoted by delta is L into B. So this is the relationship for area of the rectangle and the figure you can see it resembles here this figure. What's a square guys? So square is nothing but again a rhombus with internal angle to be equal to 90 degrees. So if I have to just make a square, so this is a square. Yeah, this is a square where this is A, B, C, D. It's basically a rhombus. Why rhombus? Because all sides are equal and opposite sides are parallel. So rhombus with AB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to DA. So how different it is from rhombus? Is that there's a special type of rhombus where internal angles are 90 degrees so some property matches with rectangle as well so internal angles are 90 degrees so you can write angle b is equal to angle c is equal to angle d is equal to angle a is equal to 90 degrees okay this is a and best part is diagonals not only bisect each other they bisect each other at right angle so let me just draw a proper yeah so from a to b let's say this is the diagonal so hence diagonals diagonals bisect each other at right angles okay and diagonals are equal as well okay all are 90 degree right so most ideal quadrilateral you can see you can say it is the most ideal quadri lateral now what about kite so let us draw a kite yes guys so this is kite a b c and d so if you see in this kite so let me write it kite in kite a b is equal to a d so two pairs of adjacent sides are equal c d is equal to c d is equal to c b and what else if you see angle A, D, C is equal to angle A, B, C. Using congruence, you can easily prove it. And the larger diagonal A, C, A, C bisects smaller diagonal B, D at right angles. Okay. So this side will be equal to this side. Let it be O. And this is 90 degree okay this is all about kite okay what else area area of the kite is given by half into d1 into d2 again what is d1 the longer diagonal d2 is the smaller diagonal okay half into d1 into d2 using the formula half into base into height you can easily find or prove this particular formula so this is all about uh, different types of quadrilateral guys so what i would suggest is you keep this uh, slide in front of you whenever you are trying to solve the problem so i'm just so you can take a screen grab of this as well so this is the slide which i want you to keep in front of you whenever you are trying to solve problems related to quadrilateral in the subsequent session let us take up problems on quadrilaterals and using these properties we'll try to uh, prove or let's say you know achieve the desired result in those problems Thank you.